um, so anyway, all I'm trying to all I'm trying to say with that is that um, because it's a probably because it's a D20 game and it comes from a, a similar mindset in the way that the game is designed and the way that the game is focused. Now, Star Wars should be about action and part of action is combat, and I I like having action and combat in my games, but at the same time, I think it feels a little too much engineered in the combat direction, or at least it puts a little more um, em emphasis or importance on combat uh, on combat capabilities than I think it needs to. Um, this is something that could be fixed by a uh, you know a, a GM who's who is inspired enough to do so, that creating his own. Uh, you know, maybe his own talents and powers and, and feats and whatnot, so that there's more options out there. Now, granted, um, I can say that there are that there are several of the source books that have been released that I haven't read. Uh, one of those being the Jedi Training Manual. So I'm sure that people will, you know, will call me a heretic and say, "Well, but there's all these kinds of you know stuff that you can choose in the later books." Okay, well that might be true. And so if that's if that is the case, I do apologize for making this sound slanted the way it is. Um, but I don't. I'm not familiar with those. I'm more more approaching it from um, the the elements that are presented as character options in the core book and the Knights of the Old Republic source book um, in terms of force uh, force options. So there might very well be a lot of other non-combat options and, and other things that you can do and new powers and stuff that you can take um, but I'm not familiar with them so I, again I apologize if I'm if I'm speaking out of turn and that's not to say that that's the only way that you that you have to play Star Wars Saga as dungeon crawls in space no I'm not saying that but it is definitely it favors characters who or rather it provides for characters who want to have combat focus and it's a little more difficult for characters who don't want to be so combat oriented to kind of finagle the system to get what they want out of it. I love the skill system from Saga Edition. I like that they removed uh, skill ranks, even though it does introduce um, a quality where there's not a whole lot of, uh, there's not quite as much separation or distinction between characters because you're either trained in a skill or you're not trained in a skill, so there's no. Um, there's less granularity in knowing, oh, is this character better at this skill or is this character better at it? It's, it's you know, really the only difference between characters who are trained in a skill now comes down to their attribute level, the attribute modifier that's influencing that skill. But I like the, the simplicity of it. I like that it that it just makes character creation a lot faster and easier, and it makes uh, calculating your character a lot quicker and easier. So. Um, that part of it gets a thumbs up for me. I like the, I like that they added kind of your uh, what do they call it damage threshold, the wound system to Saga Edition, so that even if you have you might only you know have lost five of your forty hit points, but there are effects that can happen uh, regardless of how many how many hit points of damage that you've taken that can hinder your character. So your character can be basically rendered unconscious if I remember correctly even if you're only at half hit points just depending upon um, effects of special attacks or weapons that are used against you and that's the way that um, one of the ways that Saga Edition tackles weapons with stun settings is that they don't do a lot of damage in fact they do half the damage that a normal weapon does but they inflict condition penalties on you so um, there's some pretty good there's some pretty good um, mechanical nuggets in there um, the main pro okay, so what is what are the main problems that I have with Saga Edition that I haven't already mentioned? Well, part most of it stems from the fact that it is D20, and so what does that mean? Well, that means that it inherently uses a level-based uh, character advancement system, and I the older I get, the more role-playing games I play, the more I dislike level-based systems, and that's because I prefer a much more um, granular or, or much more um, kind of uh, what would you I don't know the word the proper word for it but, but where individual elements of the characters increase 
depending upon what the character does and depending upon how how the player wants to advance the character. A level system very much feels like, a, you know, to me, more and more feels like a video game because it's like you if you gain X number of experience points, suddenly your character is better at everything. Well, you know, your character is better at this, 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 and this. Whether or not your character was focused, you know, you, uh, on those elements. If your character was through several sessions and didn't have a single combat, well, you know, but you gained a level. Well, why does your character's combat expertise suddenly increase? And that's just one of the things that kind of niggles away at me liking level-based systems. I prefer more sort of. I hesitate to use the term skill-based systems, but systems where your advancement is more particular, where it's, okay, you've earned X number of experience points, and where do you want to spend them? Oh, well, my character used his diplomacy skill a lot the last adventure, so I want to increase my diplomacy. But I didn't use my blaster skill, so I'm not going to increase my blaster. Um, you know, and that, that kind of where a character could be advanced and he could have a lot of experience under his belt, but that doesn't mean that he's necessarily better at, the, at everything than he was when he started out his his career. Um, you know, I, I like the idea, um, one of the ideas from Star Wars D6, that depending upon how a character advances, um, a stormtrooper could present as much of a threat to a beginning, gen, uh, you know, starting gen character as he could to a character with a hundred character points. Um, because if the character, if the PC in question never improves his strength score or his dodge skill, uh, which is entirely at the discretion of the player, then he is as, you know, then a stormtrooper is as dangerous to him as it was when he first started out because he's never improved those skills. He's never improved his ability to fight a stormtrooper. So it makes sense that a stormtrooper is still as dangerous to him. Um, and that's something that a level system makes more difficult because a stormtrooper represents uh, X level of threat to a first level PC versus, you know, X level of threat to a 10th level PC unless you get into, you know, wanting to, as a game master, wanting to beef the stormtroopers up by giving them extra levels or extra bonuses. But the same stormtrooper that you fought at first level is suddenly less significant um, simply by virtue of your character's level advancement, whether or not your character is a combat-oriented character. Even a noble character, you know, and Granted, you know, you can do whatever you want with your character, but even a noble who is not a combat-focused guy, or generally wouldn't be, you know, um, is much more powerful at 10th level, even in a combat scenario, than he was at 1st level. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just something that I don't care for. Um, what I also... One of the things I also dislike is um, that um, there is... You know, the hit points still suffer from a little bit of, you know, the the damage threshold alleviates a little bit of the problems with the hit point system, but there are still some kind of issues I have inherent with hit points and the fact that you, like, once again, as you gain levels, you just inherently gain more hit points, so you become tougher and tougher, or, you know, it's harder and harder to to challenge that character in a combat sense, or, or at least damage that character. Um... And, you know, like I mentioned, there's some there's some quibbles that I have with the way that they present the Force, um, even though, you know, they they do a lot of good things with it. But even that, even that there's a class-based system, um, once again, not, not just level-based, but now there's class-based, it introduces some separation of character concepts that I find it a little hard to kind of work around because classically speaking now you can multi-class characters uh, pretty freely in Saga Edition but generally speaking from examples of Jedi characters in other media and we're not talking necessarily just about the movies here but about from comic books and novels and stuff is that generally Jedi were Jedi, but they were also something else. So he was a Jedi, but he was also a pilot. Or he was a Jedi, but he was also a techie. You know, and they very much intermingled those things. And you can do that in Saga Edition, just like you can multi-class in most D20 games. But, um, but you lose something in that translation. Just, you know, there's a million threads on the internet. You can go search them, talking about D20 systems and multi-classing. Um... But you know, basically, you're you're um, 
you have to really heavily consider multi-classing in a D20 game because there's the issue of losing effectiveness and staying competitive with similar with characters of a similar character level if you do so. Um, and that's something that um, I find a little finicky in any version of D20. And so Saga Edition, you know, doesn't, once again, it's still class based, so it doesn't separate itself from this idea. Uh, okay, this one's, I'm rambling on here, but uh, let me tackle my final thoughts in one last video part. Thanks.